So let's look at applying um, insertion sort to this this array here. Um, we have an index 0 through 5, so we have six elements here. And I'd like to do two things. Um, consider the efficiency or um, the complexity of this, uh, meaning how quickly does it sort an array, and also uh, just get a sense of how the algorithm works. So what the way insertion sort works is that you will pick the next item from an unsorted portion of the array and then place it into its proper or ordered place in the sorted uh, um, uh, portion of the array. So we take the very first element here and we say there's nothing to do. It's sorted. So that very first element um, is the number 8. And so then what we're going to do is do a number of comparisons with the first element to the right of the so-called sorted portion of the array. So that first element is 5. And we're going to take that 5 and move it into its proper position by doing comparisons and swaps. So you look at the 5 and you compare it to 8. And if since 5 is less than 8, we'll go ahead and do a swap. So in that case, there's one comparison and one swap giving us our 5 and our 8. And that portion there to the left of my green line is considered the sorted portion of the array. And then to the right um, is the 9, 2, 6, and 3, and that's unsorted. Now, we index over. So we start it with maybe an index i equal to 1, then the index i is at 2. Um, so looking at that, we're going to take 9 and compare it to 8. If 9, there's one comparison, but if 9 is less than 8, or to the portion here, then we would have actually done a swap. But it's just simply, in this case, one comparison to let us know that um, it's not proper to do a swap there. So we just kind of stair-step our way through, increasing the size. Right now we have 5, 8, 9 that's sorted. And what's unsorted is our 2, 6, and 3. So with our 2, we would do a comparison swap, comparison swap, comparison swap. So we'd have to compare, compare, compare. There would end up being three comparisons and three swaps to get 2 into his correct position, leaving us with a 2, 5, 8, and a 9 for our sorted array. And so leaving us also, oops, let's undo that. So 2, 5, 8, and 9. And then we have 6 and 3 that's in our unsorted uh, portion. Now we have our 6. We do a comparison and a swap, which places 6 here. A comparison and a swap that places 6 here. A comparison, but no swap because uh, 5 is less than 6. So we end up with two swaps, although we had three comparisons. So with the 6, right, there's a comparison and a swap. A comparison is 6 less than 8, yes, and there's a swap, so 6 would end up here. There's a comparison and no swap. So 6 moved from position 4 to position 2, so there were two swaps. So its position change should also correspond to the number of swaps that were required to get it there. So let's keep going on with this. We now have, in this sorted array, we have um, our 2, 5, 6, 8, and 9. And we have one more element in our unsorted array. So we have a 3. So our 3, there's going to be a comparison, 
against the 9 and a swap, a comparison against the 8, and he's in that position, a comparison against the 6, and he gets exchanged, and then a comparison against the 5, he gets exchanged, a comparison against the 2, and no exchange. So there ends up being 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 comparisons, although there's only one, two, three, four swaps. And so at that point, we have our sorted array. It's two, three, five, six, eight, and, um, and a nine. So the total number of comparisons ends up being two plus three is five. That's 13. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 3 and 5, that gives us 13 comparisons. And then for the swaps, there's 10 swaps. So in the next video, we're, we'll look at how we can use um, this pattern to see that in the worst case scenario, um, the number of comparisons ends up being proportional to n squared. So we'll do an analysis that shows if we had six items and it was reverse sorted, we'd end up with um, 15 different comparisons. If we had seven items, we'd end up with 21. If we had eight items, we'd end up with 28. And if we had um, in items, in general, we'd end up with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus up to n minus 1. And if that can be summarized as n times n minus 1 all over 2, which is an n squared, um, it, sh it tells us that there it's proportional. The number of... Um, Oops, this is the number of comparisons. Number of comparisons is proportional to the size of the array um, squared. It's basically a quadratic. So we'll show that in the next, um, in, in another video.